Spindle spindles. Look at all these spindles. On the left, we got a brand new John Deere uh, replacement spindle for the 54 inch mower deck. Uh, it's pretty nice. You get everything except for a blade. <laughs> but uh, it comes pre greased. You get a new pulley. It's going to have new bearings, new seals in it. And uh, even the shield is new. So that's pretty nice. Uh, the price on this was list about $88. Uh, they charged me $97 though. So I don't know what's going on with that. I don't know if that's just a price increase that hasn't made it to the website or what's going on. <clears throat> right here, I've got a original spindle, 20 years old, all taken apart uh, with the original seals and bearings and everything else. And then I've got replacement seals, bearings, and then these little bushings here that the seals ride on. And uh, so all this together, so this is original. You'll reuse this uh, in the shaft and everything. And this stuff here was, let's see, $40 or so for the bearings, and then probably another $15 or $20 or $25 for all this stuff here, all these extra little parts. So to rebuild, you're about $65 to $70. Then all the way on the right is an aftermarket uh, brand new spindle that I got on eBay and it was sold to me as a Stens unit and it came in a Stens box. However, it was wrapped <laughs> it was wrapped in USPS uh, postal envelope inside the Stens box that had clearly been opened before. So, I don't know what this actually is. Uh, I'm not I'm not convinced it's actually a Stens part, but I bought it thinking it was a Stens, so I'll just go with that. Uh, looks pretty decent. Okay, it comes with a pulley and everything. It even comes with a, a bolt on the bottom here for the blade. So, uh, how good is it? I have no idea. I got to tear into it. Uh, it's got a zerk on it. I don't see any residual grease like I did on the deer part. So I don't know how much grease is in it, if any. Uh, there's a number on the top right here, C06, C026PDL. That's not the Stens part number. I don't know what that is. Um, so. What I plan on doing is taking this apart to see what's inside. I'd like to take this one apart too, but I don't want to mess up the, the seals or anything like that. Uh, so I'm going to leave it alone. I'm, I've got enough faith in this new John Deere part that it's good. Uh, it's greased, ready to go. This is a bolt in part. Uh, for the money, eh, I kind of wish it would come with new bolts, but you know, it is what it is. Okay, this is where we're at. $97, thereabouts. List price was $88. They charged me $97. Again, I don't know what's going on there. Rebuild parts, so just this alone, $67. $40. $40. So the price of two new bearings, I got a whole new spindle. But then again, I don't know. Is it any good? I'm not sure. Okay, now that we got all this stuff laid out, what do you say we take this guy apart and find out what's inside. Let's do it. So before I take this apart, I want to do a quick side-by-side -side comparison of these spindles. So the deer and then the stens, quote-unquote stens. Uh, dimensionally, I would say they're identical. Just looking at them side-by-side, -side, you know, I haven't measured anything. Uh, the casting on this looks real nice. This is a little bit rougher. Uh, I don't know if that really means anything. Uh, surface finish is what it is, but you know, how good is the parent material? Uh, the only other thing I've noticed is, so there's residual grease on this Zerk right here, which tells me it's been greased. There's nothing on this one. It doesn't mean it hasn't been greased. It just means that there could not be any grease in it. Also, I noticed this one, the shaft uh, stands proud. It's a little bit longer on this one versus this one. Uh, just looking at it earlier, another thing I noticed was uh, the socket that I used to take these apart, this is an inch and an eighth. Fits on the deer pretty tight. When I take it over to the stens, does not fit quite as well. I might have to find a different socket for this one because uh, I risk rounding it off. Otherwise, I'd say they're the same. Uh, the stens includes a bolt for your blade. Uh, there is no there's no hardness indicator on it, so I don't know how good of a bolt that is. Uh, when you spin this, 
It's pretty smooth. Feels okay. When you spin the deer, it squeaks. The camera can probably pick it up. And what that is, is that is the seals dragging against the bushings, which tells me it's got good, fresh, tight seals in it. But they might not be lubricated very well. So I'm a little, little worried about that. Are they gonna get are they gonna get roasted right away? Or maybe the flip side is these seals aren't very good at all. They're just gonna leak right away. Um, I guess we'll find out when we tear this guy apart. All right, let's crack into this thing. I will show no mercy. 27 mil, 27 mil socket fits pretty good on that. Okay. So the pilot for the pulley is the same. It's got this hexagonal feature. All right. <laughs> so if this seal was any good, I should not be able to pull this bushing out so easily. It just dances around in there. In fact, I mean, there's, there's 20 thousandths or so worth of play in there. The seal isn't going to do anything. Grease is going to come out of that right away. And then there are, there are sharp edges on this bushing. So if you do, uh, push a seal in or pull a seal out. There's just, it's just gonna get cut on this bushing. So so far I'm not really impressed with this Now that isn't to say We couldn't just tear this apart and put new deer parts in it. So let's say you had um, a really smashed up bad spindle a deer one and you went out and got one of these for 40 or 50 dollars and then maybe you found some aftermarket seals that were better than these or uh, some bearings that were better than what's in here. I don't know what's in here yet, but, you know, something along those lines. You might be okay to use this as more of a core as a good rebuild. But, yeah, I am not impressed with that. So on the deer, as soon as I pulled this out of the vise, I was able to push the shaft out. So let's see if we can do that. Oh, yeah. Oops. It's, the, it's not even tight. Very, very sloppy. Oh, look at the, oh my gosh. Okay, look at the bushing that came out. A seal is supposed to seal against this. This is very rough. Uh, it's rusted. It's got weird tool marks on it. This is garbage. This is absolute garbage. And this one, whoa. I mean, other than the crummy surface finish, this one doesn't look too bad. I think this sat in water for some time because this is rusted as well. And because the seals don't work, water got inside. Uh, there is no grease in it. I put my finger all the way in here, there is no grease. And you know why there's no grease? Because it wouldn't hold grease. So if they'd put grease in this ahead of time, it all would have leaked out during shipping. This is a piece of crap. Now let's take a look at the bearings. You know what, first I'm gonna pull these seals out. <laughs> so the deer seals never came out that easy. Looks like there's a, maybe a little bit of sealing compound in there, or maybe assembly lube. All right, here's the seal. Yeah, it's, it's rubber, uh, has no lip on it. It's just a flat piece of rubber. I'll get a new deer seal here for comparison. New deer seal, aftermarket seal. The deer seal has two lips, what we would call a Probably a dust lip, and then the actual sealing lip. I wonder if that would actually press in there. And then this seal, quote unquote, uh, it's more of a baffle than it is a seal. There's not even a lip on it. It is absolutely smooth. Garbage. All right, now i got to try to get that bearing out. I 
remember with the deer, with the deer hub, uh, one bearing was kind of a slip fit and the other one was pressed. I couldn't remember which was which. Oh, I still got a seal on this side. So I'm going to try to drive this bearing out. If the bearing wasn't junk when it was new, it's probably junk now. <laughs> Uh-huh. So this has the wrong type of bearing in it. It is a 6204, which is the, I guess, the right nomenclature, but it's a 2RS, two radial seals. The deer would not have seals here. The deer would rely on the lip seal to hold the grease in. These are pre-packed bearings. And just you know, like feeling it, it doesn't feel too bad. It doesn't sound that great though. Made in China. Yeah, I'm not, not really impressed here. So I have no idea if it's a, a C3 or a C4 bearing, but I'm gonna guess it's a C3. What do you say we knock this seal out and see if there's actually any grease in here? I think that's a good idea. So the seal is barely functional. It's just a piece of rubber that's pressed in there. No, I take that back. It's got, it's got a steel core. It's got a little steel core on it. Very flimsy. It's not very good. So it is pre-packed with grease. feel too bad it's just a new bearing so I would say overall I, I can't really speak to the quality of this bearing um, I think it's wrong for this application uh, I think this seal is crap uh, I think the seal in the hub is crap and so my assessment of the aftermarket quote-unquote stens spindle is that it's crap uh, also I don't actually think it is a Stenz. I think somebody, some eBay seller has ripped me off uh, because when I saw other Stenz products for sale on eBay, they were much more. They were $60, $70. About the same price as the rebuild hardware for the John Deere spindle. All right, so curiosity got the best of me. I'm taking apart this brand new John Deere spindle and I want to see what it's like in there. It's definitely packed with grease so it's got a real nice seal on it Let's see if I can get this shaft out there I just lightly tap on the shaft with my hand and it comes right out let's see if I can get this bushing out of there that shaft is real real tight fit it's not a press fit oh, there we go yeah, it's got grease in there. Not a ton. Those bushings, these bushings, uh, these seal bushings are pretty tight in there. Yep, yeah, lots of grease. I'm not going to pull the seal out. When this was new and you rotated the pulley, it would squeak real bad. Not bad, I'm not saying it's bad necessarily, but it was kind of loud. And what I was worried about was that the seals weren't lubricated properly and that they were going to burn up. This bottom one doesn't have... Yeah, there's not much grease in there. You know what? All the grease is at the top, so once it starts running and warms up, I'll bet that grease migrates to the bottom. I mean, it's not so bad. I'm going to put a little smear of grease in here, and hopefully that'll quiet that seal down and help it break in better. Oh, the nomenclature is right on the inner race of the bat of the bearing. 
The nomenclature is right on the inner race of the bearing. And it is a 6204C4, just as they call out in the original ones. This is good stuff. This is way better than the aftermarket thing I took apart. Let's smear that with some grease. Put it together. Now I might, once it's together, once it's all reassembled, I think I'll put a couple pumps of grease in it. There we go. Put it back together. It does not squeak anymore, so that bottom seal was a little bit dry. Awesome. Okay, summary. What's the big picture here? The big picture is you get what you pay for. This is $40 garbage. Um, I think the pulley is probably okay. The nut is probably okay, even though it's kind of a different uh, socket size than the deer. Uh, seal, garbage. Uh, the bushing which is the sealing surface, that's what that seals against. Uh, that is marginal, probably garbage. Bearing, probably garbage, hard to say, but it's the wrong bearing for this application. Uh, the spacer, yeah, it's fine, it's a steel spacer. It's the other bearing, the other bushing, which was toast, right out of the package. And then the other crummy seal. Now the seal was installed wrong, <laughs> if we want to call it a seal. Uh, so this is called the seal can, the outer part, the steel part. It was deformed like it had been pressed in and then it deformed it and just kind of distorted the seal, the rubber part. It doesn't even have a lip on it, so I'm, I'm reluctant to even call it a seal. Uh, it's more like a baffle, like I said. Um, so, you know, what would someone do with this? I mean, it's got a, it's got a zerk on it. It does have a hole in the shaft for, to allow the grease to come through. So someone could have greased this and they'd be wasting their time because the grease can't get into the bearing because of these seals that are on here, which again, aren't very good. Uh, so they'd just be wasting their time. They'd think they're greasing it. And then uh, eventually, you know, if they put enough pressure in it, then maybe they'd get some grease into the, into the bearing. But overall, you're just wasting your time with this aftermarket stuff. You don't know what you're going to get. You're going to get some offshore garbage. Uh, my advice is, if you can, rebuild your old stuff. It's super easy. Uh, you saw how easy this came apart. Uh, the deer stuff comes apart almost as easy. Uh, the tolerances are a little bit tighter, so it's actually better. But you can't take them apart by hand and then drive the old bearings out. Uh, so what you would need to do is probably get new bearings, uh, get new seals, and maybe, maybe get new new bushings. These have uh, these been, have been polished down by the original seals, but you know what? You could probably reuse them and they'd be okay. Actually, the worn bushings are better than the new bushings in the aftermarket junk. So, now here's the thing about bearing, okay? Here's the truth. The truth about bearings. Uh, so this, this bearing, I looked it up. This is a $20 bearing. It is a 6204. That's the nomenclature. Now, this is also a 6204, but it's got... It's got this little suffix on it, 2RS. And what that means is two, what I think it means is two radial seals. That's the way I, that's the way I interpret it. So yeah, it's got two radial seals on it. But there's more to it than that. Okay, there's a clearance specification for these bearings. This is a C4, and this is likely, more than likely, a C3. What does that mean? Well, the C3 is gonna have tighter clearances, believe it or not versus the C4, but that's actually beneficial for the C4, and here's why. With wider clearances in it, it can tolerate more heat and is better for a greased application than a C3. So what do we know about spindle bearings? <laughs> well, they spin really fast, and they get really hot, and they're packed with grease. So which would you want in your spindle? Would you want a C4 or a C3? So yeah, I can find I can find a C3 version of these for about $10 
And you know, if you get a quality one and you don't do a lot of mowing, yeah, you might be okay. 10 bucks a pop. That cuts the rebuild cost almost in half. But no matter where I go, deer, Timken, wherever, and I look for a C4 bearing, 6204 C4, they're about $20 to $25. So you might as well go to your John Deere dealer and get their stuff to rebuild it, or save yourself the headache if you're not into rebuilding stuff, and just get the new one. You get, you get a new pulley, for crying out loud. This, I gotta reuse, I gotta reuse this pulley, and it's polished, and it's got a groove in it. I'm a little worried about that. Uh, so actually, I might just slap this one on. I think this one might be okay. And I'm really tempted, I'm really tempted to do a destruction test with this thing here. This, this is the cast aluminum aftermarket one, and here's an original deer one. It was already broken, so I don't mind doing a destruction test on it. I just don't really know how to do it. Uh, put it on a piece of steel and smash it with a hammer? I don't know. So that's it. That is it in a nutshell. If you're into rebuilding, go ahead and rebuild your old stuff. Out of the three spindles I've taken apart, the bearings and a lot of them were actually still pretty good. They felt good. Reuse it, repack it, reuse it. If you're not into doing that, you're not hurting yourself by finding a new deer spindle. Well, I think that's it. Uh, if I find anything else, I will add it to the video. Oh, you know what? I may try to contact Stens. I was so this was sold to me as a Stens unit. I'm not convinced that it is. So I might reach out to them and see if there's some identifying markings I can look for. There's a number printed on the uh, pulley, but there, there wasn't anything anywhere else. So I might reach out to them and see if there's a way I can identify it. Okay, quick update on the Stens spindle, quote unquote Stens. I contacted Stens to find out if there's a way to tell if this is actually a Stens part. And unfortunately, there's no way to tell. Uh, what I was told is there, there are no stampings anywhere uh, to know whether or not this is a genuine part that they sell. Um, so with that, I, I guess all I can say is I don't really know what it is. Uh, this is the box that it came in. So this was inside another box, uh, like a Husqvarna box or something, which didn't bother me. But, you know, it, it's, a, it's just a cardboard box with their label and everything on it. Um, and this is how it came. It came with tape that was torn open, and then the part was actually wrapped in this USPS shipping bag, which I thought was really weird. Um, so it was packaged nicely to be safe and everything, but I would have expected this to be in a clear plastic bag with a Stens logo on it or something like that. Uh, not, not like this. Uh, so that's why this is highly suspect. I, I have a feeling someone somewhere got a very cheap offshore version and then put it in an older Stens box and then send, send it out, you know, sold it as a Stens part. So I, I suspect something shady is going on here. So I'm not, I'm not going to bash Stens. Um, they're very responsive, and I appreciated their help over the phone. Um, but I guess all I can say is buyer beware. Um, buy from a reputable dealer. Don't buy from an, uh, an online seller, even if they have really good positive feedback, which this seller did, and that's one of the reasons why I bought it. Um, Either way, you don't know what you're going to get. Uh, try to buy local if you can. If you if you know there's a lawnmower shop near you and they sell this kind of aftermarket stuff, maybe maybe check them out and see what they have to offer. So I think, what am I going to do with this? This is, I think this is going to get rebuilt maybe. Um, I'll maybe get some better seals for it and just kind of put it back together and keep it around for a spare or sell it as a used unit. I'm not going to sell it as a new and uh try to be transparent with it or I'll just throw it in the scrap bin <laughs> I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do so that's it for now thanks again for watching